Look at this tiny cutie. One of the questions I constantly get from people is what budget light do I recommend to get started with? I always have a hard time answering it, but not anymore. I'm gonna cut to the chase, not hooking you until the end of the video. Aperture introduced the MRN 60D and 60X, which is not only the best budget light by far, to spoiler it, beating the competition with the quality, price and the revolutionary form factor, but also it is an awesome addition to any creator on any level. We as content creators are always on the look for something better, cheaper and smaller, the list goes on. In this video we are going to talk about the MRN 60X bicolor version and discuss everything from quality, in and out, price and who is it for and it wouldn't be my style of video if I haven't shared my tips and tricks with you guys. So make sure to stick till the end of the video, believe me, it's worth it. But first, intro. A disclaimer as always, Aperture was kind enough to send me this slide, but they have no saying in how I review them, so the tips and opinion I'm gonna share with you is my own honest thoughts. Okay, now that we clear this out, I just have to say it again, in my humble opinion, these budget lights are the best starting options for small content creators. If we look at the competition of the 60 watt budget lights. We have the Godox SL60, the Nanlite Forge 60, the Viltrox V-Light Ninja 300, and of course my first light, the Sokoni X60. While all of them are great options, you cannot go wrong with neither of them, Aperture did something beyond expectations. They created a unique form factor and the light quality at the yet unbeatable price. The MRN 60D is 600 euros and the 60X is 240 euros. Here is a table in comparison with the other budget lights uh, you can see now. Actually, aside from the form factor and the amazing accurate features, the price is that really decides the debate for the budget lights now, making it the perfect choice. Not only does it have amazing specs and easy to carry it with you, but it is around 100 euros cheaper than its contenders. To be specific, the 60D is 200 euros, while the Nanlite Forza 60 is 310, the Godox ML60 is 300 euros. The bicolor versions, the 60X is 240 euros, the Nanlite Forza is 340, and the Godox ML60 is 340 euros. The Godox SL or ML60 and the Nanlite Forza 60 were the first contenders in this category. If we compare these lights with the MRN 60 series, they all have a slightly different shapes, but all are compact. I will talk about the size of the aperture lights in a bit, but the two biggest difference between these and the MRN one is that it has a native Bowman's mount, plus a V-mount built into the body of the light. Now, let's talk about what's in the box. Actually, first, a shout out to the carrying case itself. I love this heavy duty, high density form structure and design. It's sturdy and lightweight, giving enough room for protection. It is something I want to bring with me to a shoot just to, well, show off with it. The box has more than you need for a starting kit. A small Bowen's mount, an AC adapter with the long enough cords, a well-built yoke that rotates 180 degrees, a dual NPF battery adapter and, of course, the lights itself. One note though, the material of the Bowen's count, it is plastic. I've never seen a plastic Bowen's count, so I can speak for its long-term usability, how it holds up for scratches and dents over time, but it just feels cheap compared to the other parts in the box and the quality that Omron represents. Plus, for some reason it has the strongest middle light spot I've ever seen. The build quality is decent, even though the light is made from plastic, it is super high quality. While I'm not sure it is not an indestructible, I don't really want to do like a full test, but you are not going to break them or harm them unless you really want to. Now, let's talk about its design, because there is a lot to cover. First, its form factor makes it look like a red cinema camera, which is super cool. 
Just by looking at these lights, you can tell that a lot of thought went into the design process. The first thing that stands out for me is the large LED panel is not on the back, but on the side. We'll talk about the controls in a bit. The reason they did this because you can actually see through straight to the light back to front, making the ventilation really high profile. Thus, the fan is in line with the light rather than being oriented on the side or the bottom, making cooling way more efficient. It also means that the fans don't need to spin that hard, making the light significantly quieter, which is a huge plus and you are not going to have any issues in these regards. Since the light has this open airflow, the screen had to go somewhere else and I guess this is why they put it on the side of the light. While we have seen it before, the way Aperture designed it, it is excellent. With the large panel, especially compared to the small form factor of the light, there is enough surface area for you to see the brightness, Bluetooth connections, and the color temperature for the 60X version. Then, there is the mounting option. The yoke is not attached to it, but there is a screw hole, which enables you to attach it well to any traditional tripods, ball heads or friction arms, which is quite a plus on the go. I have to highlight that since these lights are so lightweight, you can basically mount them anywhere. The included yoke has an umbrella holder, which is a nice touch. Plus, the bracket also doubles as a handle if you want to use the light handheld, which you can do. The last thing that I actually mentioned before is that the V-mount bracket is attached directly onto the side of the light. It is something that is not common at all in this price range and I've only seen it on the Viltrox V-Light Ninja 300, which by the way is an awesome light. The MRN60 series comes with a double NPF battery adapter that you can mount to the V-mount bracket but if you already own or planning to get, which I highly recommend and uh, videos are coming up for uh, VMAN batteries, so make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. So if you already have a VMAN battery, you can just throw that bad boy onto the light and power it with a DTAP cable on the go. An important thing to highlight here is that you get the same output no matter if you power it through DC or battery. Just to give you a ballpark of the runtime, it's around 45 minutes with two NPF batteries using the light at full brightness. Oh, and a nice small touch is that the power connector on the light is a lock-in type, so you get this extra security and don't need to worry about it falling off. Now, a bit about the controls. It is pretty straightforward, the knob is uh, sturdy and easy to control, it is located right next to the LCD panel on the back of the light. You can adjust the brightness by 1% increments and if you press the knob then in 10% increments. With the X version you need to press the knob for around 3 seconds and it switches to the color temperature setting that you can adjust in steps of 100 values, but if you press the knob then you can select between pre-made increments of uh, thousands. Whenever I make a video about Aperture products, I cannot leave out the unbeatable Saidu Sling app, which in my opinion is the best in the market. You can not only adjust everything through the app, but create your own presets, pair it and control it with other compatible lights and use or create a variety of effects. You can simulate flickering light bulbs, campfire, TV flickering, plus on top of these, on the 60X there are some jail modes available. The side sling just works and it is so reliable. Color accuracy and some values. Since the COB is pretty small, it has the strongest follow from the center that I've ever seen. It is really visible when you use the included count. But if you put on a modifier like a softbox with two or more layers of diffusion, it is barely noticeable and provides a decent soft light. It has a CRI of 96 plus and a TLCI of 98 plus, which is pretty accurate. The bicolor version 60X has an extended color temperature ranging from 2700 to 6500 Kelvin. While many lights lose color accuracy at the end of their range, the 60X holds up pretty well. 
One pro tip coming up. The color temperature will change depending on what brightness you use, so I would recommend using custom white balance. It is important to mention that the light name can be a little bit misleading since the light actually puts out 65 watts of power and when counting in the fans and electronics and screen, its output is around 76 watts. Here is a measurement by New Layer who used his Sokani C800 and compared it to the Godox and Nanlite 60 watts lights. The results show that the MRN60 series is one third stop brighter. All in all, with such an amazing specs and features and taking the huge price difference in factor, it is kind of hard to justify anything other than the MRN60 series for small content creators. That being said, if you own a set of lights from brands like Godox or Nanlite, you might want to stick to that system. While I love Nanlite's Pebble tubes, I'd honestly consider switching to Aperture products just because of the Sidus link itself, since there is a companion brand called SGC Lite that has the same quality of RGB tube lights as the Nanlite Pebble tubes, and it is compatible with the Sidus link. Now, the floor is yours. What do you think? Are the MRN60 series the best budget light options, especially with their larger brothers for building a kit with the 100 or 200 series, or you would prefer to use something else? Please let me know down in the comments and uh, continue the convo there. Links are in the description under the like button, which, by the way, you should press since it would be highly appreciated as well as hitting the subscribe button with the notification bell as well, since I have a tons of content coming up related to content creator gear review with tips and tricks. But this is not all. I actually take you along with me to shoot BTS vlog style where I show how I come up with my creative ideas and how I shoot and edit my creamy b-rolls. If this is something that you are into, you know what you gotta do. Anyways, that's it from me, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video or at least found it informative or entertaining, and I do hope to catch you in the next one. Bye!